What's up, everybody? Uh, sorry, it's uh, been a long time since the uh, the last update, but I'll make that up to you now. Uh, so last video, we went through removing a bunch of uh, CSS and adjusting it <coughs> so that we didn't have any uh, fixed widths on the, uh, the page. And that's going to be a great starting point for today. Uh, great found work, uh, or, I'm sorry, foundation. Uh, <coughs> what we'll be using here is uh, Bootstrap. If you don't know what Bootstrap is, it's a uh, full uh, uh, rapid web development framework. So it's going to include a grid system, it's going to include some uh, JavaScript that you can just use very easily. Uh, you can accomplish certain pop-ups without even having to write your own JavaScript at all. Um, it's got its own uh, icon set that comes with it. A lot of people say that it might be a bloated uh, framework, but I tend to use actually the majority of it. It's also... Okay, fuck this. It's uh, also, if you go to uh, Theme Forest or anything like that and look up any sort of um, <coughs> responsive templates, a lot of them will say like features bootstrap uh, framework. So we'll be able to say that about this project here. And <coughs> what I'm going to do is show you how their grid system works before anything. It's crucial that you just understand how that works. And then once you do, you're going to be a lot powerful, or a lot more powerful. So I just got uh, Notepad++ open here. And you can follow along this or not. It's more conceptually how this works. So, I got a standard uh, page template here, and you can always check out Bootstrap by going to getbootstrap.com. Uh, I'm going to be going to Bootstrap CDN, that way I don't have to download the files locally and have them on my server, I can have them hosted uh, remotely and I never have to think about their location. So um, you can grab the uh, CSS here. We're just going to go ahead and copy and paste these. And now grab the JavaScript. There we go. Okay, and I'm just going to put some HTTP first. <coughs> All right, so now that I have that there, the way that this grid system works is it's based on 12 columns. So imagine every row on a web page as being 12 columns wide. Um, just to let you show how that is um, with Bootstrap, all these classes that I'm going to use are built in. Uh, to this CSS file already. So div class equals row fluid. Okay, and I'm just going to put end row. <coughs> now this says that all the columns in here uh, make them a percentage based width. And this will also help with clearing our divs because they're all going to float left, which is actually really a good idea when it comes to responsive design. Is every I just float everything left. So let's get into our first column. I'm just going to do div class equals call sm for small. And then I'm going to pick a number between 1 and 12. In this case, I'll choose uh, 7. And I'll close out that div. So it's a column uh, we're going to be optimizing for smaller uh, windows. So column small 7. OK. Then within that, going to do that. equals um, column small uh, five. 
So notice that I have a row div, then in that I have two divs. One column small 7, column small 5. These two, or every all the divs within the row fluid, have to add up to 12. So here I have 7 and 5. Now how does this work? Uh, I'll put some lorem ipsum. And my text expander will throw that in for me. And then let's say... Um, put the same thing there, only maybe I'll get rid of like half of it or something. Okay, now I give this call 7 here. Um, that means it'll take up 7 twelfths of the width of the page or the container that it's in. And this, this will take up 5 twelfths. So, simple math. So I'll just open this up in Firefox. And this is our call 7. That's our call 5. You can see how the text will change because these are percentage based widths. I can even go here and there's all these rules that get applied by the bootstrap framework. Um, so basically in every row you want to have call 7, call 5 and eventually this will uh, cascade down so that they're Here's my call 5, and that's my call 7 up there. So that's how we're going to be getting our responsiveness. I'll just give you another example. Say you want something to be half on one page, or say you want two things to equal up the same width on the page. You would just do call 6 and call 6. Those evenly equal out to be 12. So if I were to go back here, refresh, these would... Uh, both have half. So if you understand that then you're ready to rock out essentially. So what I'll do here is we're going to <coughs> start applying this to just the template files and that's actually all you need to do uh, so far at least. Um, let me get some content on the home page first. It'll look and make a lot more sense. Okay, home. Let's do this one. Home page. And I just might do a paragraph. Okay. Oh, my text is better, didn't work there. Just copy from here. <coughs> okay. And I'll just copy this a few times, maybe. All right, so now we actually have content on the home page. Now currently this doesn't cascade down properly. What we want is uh, <clears throat> we want to implement that grid system that we have. So uh, usually the traditional way to include a script or CSS is through the XML uh, here, but I don't think that that's such a good thing to do when it comes to uh, using a content delivery network. <laughs> so I'm going to go to app design, front end, default, uh, custom theme, template, and page is the, pretty much the key place here. And then you see we have HTML and we have head.phtml. All right. Now this is where Magento echoes out uh, its JavaScript and CSS and whatnot. So if you remember, or actually I can even go up here. 
If you remember how we grabbed that uh, first CSS and JavaScript, I'm just going to come back. Oops, copy the wrong one. I'm going to come back to here. Okay, we got that one. And I'll get this one. Perfect. All right. Now we're going to see which uh, template file is hosting this. I, I already know, uh, so it's kind of redundant. But this is going to be, if you've ever seen, uh, if you've ever edited the CMS pages or anything like that, and you've chosen you know, uh, one column or two columns right. Um, this is a two columns right page, as you can see right here, page two columns right. And there's that is also in the page folder. So let's go to two columns right, and we're going to edit that to be based on percentages. Oh wow, well, yeah, see? That's silly. Okay, so we're back to Eclipse. And here's two columns right. So this is the uh, this is the template file that's pulling in to create that page. So let's see. This is where it brings in the breadcrumbs, and then we have this main column here and this main column is what pulls in over here so you can probably see uh, what's highlighted right now once I hover this in Firefox okay so let's go back here and what I'm going to do is div class equals row fluid. And Eclipse just tried to do an autocomplete there. I hate that. Okay. And then I'll just put in comments. And row. So this is our row, everything lines up. Then instead of call main, I'm just going to do uh, div class equals uh, call sm, and then we'll make this 9 out of 12 columns. That sounds about right. Then I'll just change this one to call sm3. So 9 and 3 equaling out to 12. This should go. Uh, let's see what happens here. There we go. So this is taking up nine twelfths. This is three twelfths. And the great thing about Bootstrap is it's very, very cross-browser compatible, uh, all the way down to IE seven. So uh, let's see here. Um, if you notice the text should um yeah text is shrinking because it's based on percentages and we can go down to iphone size right there so that's well that's not all of it but as far as putting out that grid system and making things uh collapse and everything like that bootstrap framework definitely the way to go i'm going to be making a few more tutorials on you know how to apply this method right here to a bunch of the other pages. For example, uh, login page probably has two columns that it's using. There we go. So this will be a prime example of another page where we can uh, apply the same methodology. And what I'll be doing is I'll be going in and 
I'll be turning on template path hints with this uh, the extension that I showed you in the first movie and for that one I'd probably go into I'd probably look into customer form login and uh, rejigger that so that's it for now um, I'll probably come out with a few more in the next couple of weeks sorry it's been a while since I had my last uh, tutorial because just been busy it's actually 6 30 in the morning right now so uh, hope this helps everybody have if you have any questions just let me know and uh, feel free to comment rate subscribe and uh, I'll see you next time